Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting with Dr. Katie Van Valen. She's with the University of Kentucky Beef Extension Specialist there. Well, Katie, today we're going to talk a little bit about mineral and we, we put a lot of emphasis in the spring about mineral, but mineral is important for our cattle producers all year long. Exactly, exactly. So we know based on research that we really should be feeding mineral 365 days of the year. There's no one season where it it's more important than others. It, it really has to be out there all year round because some of those minerals, there's not a great way for the animals to store and, and hold on to it for later. So they got to be consuming it every day. So we typically recommend that producers look for a loose free choice mineral. So we want to avoid things like mineral blocks that you may typically see at a, a your farm store. Um, and the reason for that is those contain so much salt in them that they just don't have enough of the other minerals besides sodium and chloride that are in salt that our cattle need. So they don't have enough things like selenium and copper and zinc, which are really important for things like growth and for our cow's milking ability um, and for reproduction. So all these are really important things that we as, as cattle producers care about. We just don't get enough of them in those, those block type products. But if we have a loose free choice mineral, uh, we can look at that mineral tag and we really want to make sure that we've got um, selenium in there. Um, selenium is actually regulated in terms of how much we can feed. So you'll see pretty similar amounts of selenium. So you got to look down in the, the fine print there at the bottom and look for things like selenium yeast um, and as well as sodium selenite. So you want to see both of those uh, in that, that paragraph of ingredients. Um, because that means there's a blend of inorganic and organic sources of, of selenium, which lots of research that's been done at the University of Kentucky shows us that that, that mix of the two kinds of selenium is actually better than either of the, the sources on their own. Um, we also want to make sure we have um, all of our other trace minerals in there, zinc and copper and manganese are also you know important for our cattle, but uh, really making sure that we get that selenium type and then also looking at our, our sources of copper uh, that are in there. So I like to look for uh, minerals that have got some copper sulfate, um, but also have something like a copper amino acid uh, complex in there. And that's what that tag will tell you. Um, and that way we're getting some, some benefits of multiple kinds of copper as well. Selenium and copper are the two minerals that our cattle here in the state are probably most at risk uh, for developing a deficiency of too. And they, selenium has been linked to a lot of health benefits mm -hmm. in our cattle as well. And yep. so, and making sure, I'm glad you brought that up about looking for both of them. That mineral tag is super important. Mm -hmm. And yep. so, even though maybe you bought that, but, and I hear farmers say, well, my cattle like this one mm -hmm. better. We really need to look at the, the labels. Yes, and the other thing that that label will tell you in the directions portion of that label, it should tell you whether that's a designed to be a three ounce intake or a four ounce intake. So what we do is we put salt in there and that helps control how much the animals are gonna consume. But producers can uh, put a 50 pound bag of mineral out there um, and do a little math that they know from the tag that they should be consuming three ounces a day. Um, look at how many cattle are in the field that have access to that feeder. Um, and you can do some quick math and figure out how long that 50 pound bag should actually last you. Um, because I hear all the time, oh, they're eating me out of house and home, mm -hmm. and we have 50 cow-calf pairs out there, maybe that bag's only going to last us four to five days. Um, and so we do have to kind of keep an eye and, and replenish those supplies, but that can help you um, make sure that, that you're getting the adequate intake uh, that you need. And that intake's going to fluctuate, so it's not a, a hard and fast rule, but on average, they should be close to three to four ounces a day. But having it out there and available is, is the most important. Exactly. Yep. Putting that mineral feeder um, close to a water source or a shade source in the summer, somewhere where the cattle are going to see it and want to visit it is really important. The other thing that you can do is if you are providing supplemental feed, you can actually work with your feed mill and just get the mineral mixed right in to your feed. And then you don't have to worry about the mineral feeder and the free choice minerals. So that's another option too. Um, that might work for some producers, but for our cattle out on pasture, typically that free choice mineral is the easiest thing that we can do uh, to provide it to our cattle. So we have what we call the University of Kentucky Beef IRM Mineral Recommendations. And so myself and my colleague, Dr. Limpiller, we're the two extension nutritionists. We'll make some, some changes 
uh, to that from time to time so that we are providing the, the latest research-based evidence for, for mineral supplementation for our producers in the state. All right. Well, certainly appreciate you visiting with us today, Katie. And if you would like a copy of that mineral recommendation, you can look online for it or you can contact your local extension office. Thanks for watching and have a great day.